This TED Talk is brought to you by White Wine. It was a Saturday afternoon and I had decided to have a few white wines at home and watch Brene Brown's TED Talk on the power of vulnerability. Now, if you're not familiar with Brene Brown, she's basically the ultimate TED Talker. So I sat there in my white wine buzz, hanging off every one of her words. To sum it up, and I'm so not going to do this justice, but she speaks about how making yourself vulnerable is the ultimate power move. So after the talk finished, I did what every empowered millennial does. I signed into Facebook. Now, at this point, I'm tipsy, not completely drunk. So let's take a look at where my head is at, according to Google. According to Google, alcohol reduces our inhibitions. So the part of our brain that says, maybe that's not a good idea, doesn't work as well. So I sign into Facebook with my lowered inhibitions, and there it is, a sign. Or, in the sober world, a Facebook algorithm that is freakishly set up by, in my opinion, someone listening to me through my phone. <laughs> but that's a whole nother TED talk. JCU TEDx pitch night, the post read. Now, at this point, I have Brene's words swirling around in my head. Make yourself vulnerable. And to me, the ultimate vulnerability is standing in front of a room full of strangers and giving a talk. Now, it is also important to note that Sober Carly had wanted to do a TED Talk for years. But the problem with Sober Carly is she had a million reasons why she shouldn't. No one would care, she had nothing of importance to share, she simply wasn't good enough. But lucky for me, Tipsy Carly was filling out the application. <laughs> a week later, I get an email. My pitch had been successful. Shit. I said out loud, and I immediately started to think of ways and excuses to get out of it. And then I come across a document on my desktop that was entitled Pitch Idea. I clicked on it, and there it was, my pitch, learning to live out loud. As I sat there and I read my pitch about how I wanted to share my experiences and my journey to being a confident radio announcer and having my voice heard by thousands of people each morning, I started to feel the irony of me cancelling. I sat there and then I reflected on my journey, which was followed by a wave of disappointment. I was disappointed that it took White Wine and Brene Brown to remind me that my voice and experiences matter. But truth be told, we all need that reminder sometimes, which is why I'm standing here in front of you today and White Wine. Now, don't worry, I'm not going to stand up here and launch into some do-as-I-do speech, because for starters, you may end up with a drinking problem. <laughs> and secondly, speaking up and self-confidence is something that I genuinely struggle with every single day. Now, I've built a whole career out of having my voice heard. But truth be told, for the first couple of years of my career, I completely white-knuckled my way through. I was extremely self-conscious and hung up on my views to the point where I had edited myself to say, feel and reflect what I thought people wanted me to say. Now, maybe this strikes a chord for you. You see, your platform might not be a radio show. It might be a corporate environment, a friendship group, a relationship, or even social media. And you might find yourself completely caught up in what people are thinking about your views rather than what you are actually saying. Now, I wish I could stand up here and say that fortune favours the brave, and when you choose to truly live out loud and follow that authentic voice, that it'll be met with applause and praise. But I can't. I would be lying to you. After years of hard work, I'd finally gotten to a place in my career where I was comfortable with my platform and sharing my honest views. And this happened. I would like to ask you some questions, Carly. Yes. The first one is, is when I turn on my radio to your station, is that just your on-air persona or is that the real you? It's the real me. Why is that? Well, you've just lost a listener. Why? What's wrong with Carly? She's immature. She promotes gluttony and junk food. Bit of advice for her if she's that immature. 
don't have children because she would absolutely destroy them. Yeah, that was my reaction too. Now, that call might seem extreme, and believe you me, it certainly felt it at the time. But we have all experienced some version of that call in our lives, hopefully in a less public, less in-your-face way. But we've all been victim to someone who wants to make us feel less than. And on this occasion, it absolutely worked. I was feeling less than. In fact, that lady's words were so powerful that they had had a physical effect on me. My stomach felt like it had a hole in it. My eyes immediately welled up with tears. And that's the thing about using your voice and your words. They hold incredible weight. To make matters worse, we took that call off the air at around 6.20 a.m. in the morning. I tried to press on with the show, but I could barely get words out. That lady's words were running around in my head like a bad soundtrack on repeat. The reason why we choose to edit and silence ourselves is for that very reason, fear of ridicule. In fact, it's what kept me silent for so many years. At any one time, I had hundreds of those responses at the ready that anyone could throw at me at any one time. But the problem with this moment was, it wasn't in my head. This wasn't a drill. We had a live one. Now, I want you to ask yourself, what would you have done in that moment? How would you have reacted? Would you have bought into this lady's words and believe what she was saying? Would you believe that everyone thinks this about you at all times and she was the only one brave enough to tell you? Or would you choose to use this as a sign that you were down the wrong path and following a dream that you shouldn't be and decide to give up on a career that you'd worked so hard for? I did all of the above. But after a good 45 minutes of deliberating, this is what I did next. I decided to use my voice. I put that call to air and I sobbed like proper Oprah ugly cry sobbed on the air. That's really heavy. Yeah, like, yeah, and that has really affected me this morning. And you know me, I don't get yeah. affected by a lot, but that last comment really calmed me deep. Now, as soon as I put that to air, the reaction was overwhelming. The phone immediately began to ring. I was in such a vulnerable and fragile state after exposing myself like that that I made my co-host answer it. I couldn't possibly handle any more negativity at that point. I pictured people calling up to pile on. But my co-host was insistent at the time that I take some of these calls. And one by one, I was met with the most kind words I have ever heard in my life. People quickly came to my defence. Never in my years as a broadcaster had I evoked such a strong reaction within people. In fact, that call had the exact opposite effect that it was designed to. It made me realise that people want that real. They want that raw. As our girl Brene said, they want that vulnerability. In fact, that changed the way that I approached my platform. It made me lean into that vulnerable space. I found myself playing in it more and more, having conversations on the air that for years I'd been too scared to, such as opening up about living with a family member with mental illness. The thing about playing in that vulnerable space is it is incredibly scary, and you are very exposed. But for me, it's the people that come up to me and say that they share that connection and that they appreciate that that keeps me there. Now, chances are your platform is in a radio show. And to be fair, mine can be very one-sided at times. And what I'm not advising you to do is to start offloading all your deepest, darkest secrets to Julian accounts. But to me, learning to live out loud isn't about being the loudest or the most vulnerable person in the room. It's about taking those chances and moments in life to let yourself be honestly heard and to really back yourself in. I want you to think about those moments where you silenced yourself. Maybe you didn't put your hand up for that job you wanted. Maybe you didn't tell that person that you loved them. 
Or maybe you declined an invitation to speak because you didn't think you had anything of importance to say. Well, I'm standing here in front of you today telling you that you do and reminding myself of that. So cheers to that.